So he looks just like Iceman, uh, but I promise you he's not. I promise. Today on Comicology. Seriously, the only difference between this dude and Iceman from the X-Men is the fact that he has, like, a long nose and, like, a flat top. I mean, I guess I'm okay with that if you are. So his name is just Jack Frost. And we're actually not 100% sure who he is exactly or where he came from. Um, but we do know that he does have tremendous ice abilities and... Uh, he makes his home in the great state of Alaska. His story begins in August of 1941, with a dying man crawling painfully across the tundra. Fortunately for the man, this place also happens to be the resting place of the powerful Jack Frost, and with his dying breath he summons the elemental to life. Jack Frost takes the dead man into his arms and realizes that the evil ways of man have finally made their way to this place of solace and with great anger he vows to beat it back to where it belongs. Alright, okay, so far I'm down for this guy. He's pretty cool. He's really speaking to me with his hatred of humanity. He comes off as sort of like this stoic and isolated character, sort of like, uh, like Namor, like Namor in relation to Human Torch, how the Human Torch is very human, next to Namor, who has right to humanity, but just hates us so much. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to keep going. Let's see. Let's see how he, he hurts humans. So as we see immediately, Jack Frost has a disdain for humanity. He speaks to some police who turn the whole affair into a joke. Needless to say, Jack Frost has a negative reaction to this and decides to pursue justice for himself. He travels to New York to track down the old man's killer and finds them harassing a young woman. He battles them without mercy violently throwing them around with his superior strength and stamina. The police finally show up, but in a show of irony, they blame the entire situation on Jack Frost. They attempt to arrest him, but of course they can't do anything to such a powerful being. <laughs> so, okay, so at this point, uh, Jack Frost gets hurt. I, I mean, like, emotionally hurt uh, by the situation, and he's completely disgusted uh, with what he's discovered about humanity. Um, so he decides to become the enemy of mankind. Kind of like Namor. I, I like it. I like how this guy is sort of parallels Namor. Um, I like Namor. I like Namor a lot. But either way, regardless of how he felt about humanity, uh, for some reason, Jack Frost decides to stick around the USA. For some reason. In fact, he decides to go to the beach. And what could hurt about going for a swim? Jack had a stressful week, and he needs to relax. Except when he jumps into the water, it becomes ice cold, and everyone else in the water is forced out. I don't buy that. He did that shit on purpose. I'm liking this guy, like, more and more by the minute. However, this moment of levity doesn't last long, because within seconds, a giant robot octopus appears and attacks Jack Frost, and then kidnaps him. This, however, completely fails because Jack is remarkably powerful, and he just kind of blows his way out of there, leaving the pirates frozen in place for the police to find. So then, um, after this incident passes, he decides to be more kind to humanity. He just decides to extend an olive branch, as so to speak. Um, he decides to involve himself in more helpful humanistic affairs. He helped save a hospital from an ambulance racketeer, which ended in a brilliant car chase and a horrible wreck. He then helped to defeat a mad scientist uh, who took to killing off his employees one by one in order to steal their wealth and secrets. Uh, these adventures ultimately allowed Jack to repair his reputation with local law enforcement and put him on a much smoother path towards a positive relationship with humanity. However, after sort of coming to terms with humanity and sort of putting his past traumas behind him, uh, Jack Frost just sort of disappears for a while, and we don't really see much of him. Um, I'm assuming the reason why he's done this is because he just wants to be alone. Uh, that's why I would do it, uh, but of course I don't know for sure. 
uh, his next appearance is as a member of the superhero community um, about a year after his disappearance. The Invaders, a team of Golden Age heroes, uh, specifically Captain America, Submariner, Human Torch, and his sidekick Toro, were captured by the Red Skull and brainwashed into working for the Axis. Bucky, Captain America's sidekick, was able to escape and beckoned to call to other heroes of the world to aid him in mounting a rescue. Jack Frost was one of the heroes who answered the call. This team was known as the Liberty Legion, and not only were they able to free the invaders, but they were capable of greater good for the world, so they decided to stick together and participated in many adventures over the years. The Liberty Legion met with a time-traveling thing and aided him in defeating a team of evil Nazi super soldiers in order to fix the timeline from a rogue mistake involving a dislocated vial of vibranium. Then, in 1943, the team came together yet again to defeat the supremely powerful supervillain known as the Iron Cross. But, unfortunately, towards the end of the war, Jack Frost was one of the heroes who was killed in a battle against the Red Skull, which involved the reality-warping powers of the Cosmic Cube. Then, Red Skull used the cube to rewrite history and make it to where the Axis won the war, and all freedom and superheroes went extinct. After that conflict was over, uh, Jack Frost was returned to original continuity, but he sort of disappeared again and didn't do much crime fighting. He participated in one last mission with the Liberty Legion before calling it quits. It's alluded here that he eloped with Princess Volcana, but this is actually unlikely. In fact, uh, this final battle um, was the last mission of the Liberty Legion, uh, after this, they would all sort of separate and go their own way. So that's it, um, as far as the personal history of the character is concerned. Uh, that's pretty much everything, um, except for one thing. There's one thing left I need to tell you about. In June of 1945, the war had finally ended, and Jack Frost had actually retreated back to the Arctic. He did so to finally learn about his origin. However, when he arrived, he encountered a titanic ice worm. His battle with the Ice Worm was so epic that it shook the very heart of the glaciers, but he was eventually overwhelmed, and both he and the Worm ended up frozen and suspended in time. Later, Captain America would come along searching for one of his friends when suddenly the Worm would come to life and attack him. Jack Frost appears narrowly to save Cap, and then in one last heroic action sacrifices himself to refreeze the Worm, and submerge it into the Arctic waste, never to be seen again. So there, that's the true ending of Jack Frost. That's his last appearance in comic book continuity. Um, as sad as it may seem, uh, we're never going to learn his original origins. Uh, they remain a mystery to this day. However, there is a scene at the end of this book, right here, where Thor uh, shows up and he remarks that there is an old legend where a frost giant was born, but he was born very small, like a dwarf. And so he was exiled from Jotunheim and stranded on Earth. And perhaps this is the true identity of Jack Frost. Perhaps he is a little miniature frost giant from Jotunheim. Uh, but as far as comic, his, comic book history is concerned, uh, we'll never know for sure. So that's all I've got for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed reading these comics with me. I liked it. I was saving Jack Frost because I knew I would like doing this specific episode. He's a pretty interesting character. So I'm wondering, you guys know the drill. I need to know what do you guys think of Jack Frost. Uh, do you love him? Do you hate him? Um, I can't help but like him. Uh, he's a little stoic and a bit of a loner, kind of like me. Uh, and I'm a big fan of his really bad attitude. And what do you guys think about the origin? Do you, do you believe that he's a miniature frost giant, or do you think that there's uh, some other explanation for his appearance? Uh, let's discuss. Give me some comments below. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys.